Twins there, already. Eric. Couple postseason appearances. Here is the opening tip controlled by Furman, and we are underway here at Timmons Arena. Our officials tonight, Jerome Hall, Kenneth Totten, and Luke Payne. There's a backdoor cut and a slam for Jalen Slauson. Slauson picking up where he left off Tuesday night down in Charleston. The Paladins Aaron got out such a fast start in that game, and a game that was never in doubt, winning over 35 points. Paladins man-to-man. -man. We may see some different looks defensively from Furman tonight. Bob Ritchie telling us on the radio pregame that if the game gets where he would like it, they may try some new looks that we haven't seen. A turnover gets it into Furman's hands. Here is Slauson finding Lions. Extra pass to Gurley. Good job rotating defensively by Southern Wesleyan. Lions, he can make him from anywhere. How about that? Yeah. Right on cue. Jordan Lyons with that three-pointer, Dan, now second all-time, solo second with 215 made three-pointers in his career. First up at 273. So a little ways to go if he wants to top, but now solo second. He was tied with Justin Dane. Pass down low, immediate double team, splitting it, missing the shot with Smith. And here comes Alex Hunter. Here's Lyons again for three out of the corner. Got it. Back-to-back -back three pointers by Jordan Lyons and a quick timeout time taken by the Warriors. And Dan Furman doing a nice job really beating the Warriors down the court before the defense could get set. Yeah, Nick Pasqua immediately calling a timeout. Furman out 8 nothing here in the early going. And you leave that guy open. Don't challenge him, and he's going to do that more often than not. Yeah, there you see the nice pass by Clay Mounts, and that's something Furman's done well in these early season games, Dan, is the extra pass. We talked about it a lot last year, passing up a good shot for a great shot, and now with a quick 8-0 start, a little different outside presence where the Paladins saw on Tuesday night. It was 0-15 for Charles and Southern from downtown in the first half. And they heated up a little bit in the second when the game was out of reach. So early on, new court, different start. Nick Pasqua, you got to look at him there in his second year. As Furman showing some diamond zone pressure in the half court. And it's broken in the layup by Hunter Davis going back door. Actually off a deflection, yeah. he was right place at the right time. Here you saw a little bit of one of those defenses you referenced. Hunter will pull up, too strong. Rebound pulled down by Solomon Smith. You see the Warriors wanted to go quick. Tuesday night, Coach Ridgey was pleased with his team's transition defense. Bucks know to get out, transition, and cause havoc. Furman did a nice job getting back and really making Charleston Southern play a half-court offensive game. 15 on the shot clock. They go back down low and a little bump. And Smith, or uh, Davis rather, able to lay it in. He's got both of their buckets, it's 8-4. Junior out of Fort Myers, Florida, a quick 4-0 run after the Paladins started 8-0, and a tough pass there, a bounce pass through a lot of traffic in the lane. So the turnover gives it back to Southern Wesley, and they are located just outside of Clemson in central South Carolina, about 10 minutes from the Scott Family Ranch. I'll say you know that area well. Yep. Smith or Davis with the head fake, lost it. Scramble, and there's Slauson ahead to Mounts. He'll take it to the rack with the left hand. Count it, and the foul. Clay Mounts fighting through contact, laid it off the glass, and in. we'll have the chance to go to the line to complete the three-point play, and a nice job there as you take another look, just attack, and Slauson wanted the lob, a smart move by Mounts to lay it in. And yeah, Clay Mouse has been impressive in the early season. Not only that, but from long range, how hot he's been from yep. beyond the arc. Coming in, Mr. Mounts, over 56% from long range, 9 of 16 here in his junior campaign. Clenzo Ross committed the foul. First on either team, and Mounts with the free throw. It's 11 to 4. Just kind of finish the thought on on the Warriors, not yeah. only is it 10 minutes from my house, but that's where my oldest daughter, Samantha, uh, went to school. She and her husband, Zach, both got there 
degrees from Southern Wesleyan. Well, didn't you have another go to Charles and Southern, I yep. believe, right? So. Yeah, so we're stacking up the opponent. Solomon Smith with the left hand off the nice backdoor cut. And their athletic director, Chris Williams, is one of the genuinely good people in this business or any other. He is a wonderful, wonderful guy. Nice pull up by Jordan Lyons. Well, Lyons, an early eight points, perfect three of three from the field, Dan. You see the defense close out at those early three pointers. A nice job going by for the mid range jumper. Offensive rebound, they'll get another look. This time the three, and it's good from Ross. About Kunzo Ross, Dan, we talked about him pregame. Getting the start tonight, I'd say what he did the last two games, he's earned the start. 13-9, Warriors within four as we get under the 16-minute mark in our first media timeout upcoming. Lions for three, straight away, too strong. Gurley, though, with the board. He'll go right to the glass and draw the foul and head to the line for two after the break. The foul on Hunter Davis, his first, team second, and Noah Gurley shooting free throws when we come back. It is 13-9. Paladin's on top, and we'll be back in a moment. 13-9 in the first media timeout. Furman leading Southern Wesley and got another good turnout from the student section here tonight. Of course, we had over 700 here in just students yeah. uh, against Loyola Chicago last Friday night, but we got a little incentive here tonight because the ones who stay start to finish, 25 of those folks are going to get tickets to tomorrow's Furman Wofford football game. And for those of you who don't know what's going on there, Furman plays at Wofford just up the road in Spartanburg. And if the Paladins win it, they win the SoCon championship. The automatic bid to the FCS playoffs and very likely will end up a top eight national seed and get a first round bye in a second round home game. Yeah, what a job by Coach Clay Hendricks and his staff this year. You mentioned it's all on the line tomorrow. 1.30 kick, I believe, in Spartanburg. So good to see both programs kind of supporting each other in yep. that way. And Coach Ritchie generating interest uh, for the game down I-85. Here's Noah Gurley, first of two, and it rattles off no good. Of course, that's all predicated on Furman winning that game tomorrow. Yes. If the Paladins lose to Wofford, and that opens up a Pandora's box of all kinds of things that could. A nice hustle by Trey Clark, who just checked in, got the miss, and put it back up and in, 15 to nine. There's actually a scenario where the Citadel yeah. could still win the Southern Conference. I think they're gonna need a Furman loss tomorrow and then wins over Chattanooga and Wofford and is there, so a lot to still be decided. Now I would just prefer take care of business yeah. tomorrow and be done. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Mike Bothwell with the defensive pressure and Clenzo Ross will inbound it right here by us. Bothwell, man, one of five Paladins averaging double digits. How about that? Five different Furman players through the first three games all averaging double-digit scoring. Get a lot of hands on a lot of balls, and there's a turnover. Slauson, Bothwell, Gurley, Lyons, and Mounts, the five double-digit averagers being led by Clay Mounts with over 17 a game. You'd like to think that's going to hold true over the course of the season. Chances of it happening, not real good, but it looks good at the moment. But you know what? You say that. Five guys in double figures, that's not all that unheard of. Here's another turnover. Uh, nice job by Solomon Smith tapping away the entry pass. And Pull up three is too long, and Clay mounts with the board. Firming up 15-9. Mounts. Three straight away, got it. Well, he just keeps on the tear from long range. He's been on to start the season. And call that kind of the secondary break. It's the trail player coming in, the quick flip, give the assist to Mike Bothwell. Furman's lead at 18 to nine. Yeah, you get used to sometimes Lions being that trail player, but with the way Mounts is shooting, really any five on the court right now can make the long range shot. Clay getting a little handsy. He'll get charged with his first foul, team first. Jalen Slauson will check Noah Gurley. Tajay Dunlap, Clenzo Ross, and Hunter Davis all checking back in for Southern Wesleyan. 
Get it in along the baseline, and Ross will back it out. And now go right at Mounts. Reverse pivot, Trey Clark got the hand in and got it off the knee of Ross, a turnover, and give it back to the Paladins. Nice job as we take another look by Clark, just sticking the hand in, knocking it off the player's knee. Already the fifth turnover for the Warriors, and it led to eight Paladin points here in the early going. A year ago when these teams met, Furman was coming off of the monumental upset of Villanova as Lions misfires from deep and only led the game against this Division II opponent by 10 at the half. Ended up winning 74-57. Uh, asked Bob Ritchie on the radio if they had mentioned that at all this week, and he was like, yeah, we talked about it. <laughs> A simple nod, just an acknowledgement. By well with the lob, and Mounts could not finish it. Good idea, just slightly missed times. Mounts coming from the weak side. Stuck on 18 to 9, 13 to 20 to go. And as a nice, tough runner by Cameron Holmes. First bucket for the senior out of Fort Mill, South Carolina. Stops a three minute scoring drought. 18 to 11. Then Warriors doing a nice job switching up the defense. They're kind of going between man and zone, trying to keep this pallet and offense a little bit offbeat. Clark with 10 on the shot clock back to Slauson. Little hesitation move, and he'll head to the line for two. It's interesting talking to Jalen Slauson about how he's matured this year. He said last year he felt like he understood the offense, but the game moved really fast for him. Talking about what he's been able to do here in his sophomore campaign, he said things are coming a little bit easier. Doesn't have to think as much out there, more in the flow. And I think you've seen it nice with, with some more patience. There could have fought up early, hesitated, and earned the two shots from the line. There you take another look. Got his defender in the end. That was Lowry. And we'll see Jordan Lyons get a breather. Alex Hunter and Noah Gurley checking back in, and he'll check Clay Mounts. So for Furman, it's Hunter, Bothwell, Clark, Slauson, and Gurley. Slauson trying to hit both ends of the free throws, and he does. Furman from the line. This young season, very productive, over 77% for the charity strike. 20 to 11. Paladins by nine. Warriors have been very patient on the most part offensively, but have turned it over five times. And make it six. I hope they're able to run it down. Nearly turned it over with a Pressure just keeps coming at him. Seven on the shot clock. Here's a desperation three, and Tajay Dunlap nails it. Yeah, fresh him out of Columbia, right place, right time, as the Furman defense had a lack of active hands with the Warriors now. Two of four from long range. Bothwell to answer, yes. Paladins third from long range, pushes the lead back to nine, 23-14. Danny Mitchell. Coach Ritchie saying you may see some wrinkles in defense, really just one or two possessions so far, but mostly the man-to-man. -man. That's kind of what we've seen all year. A couple times late in that game, at Gardner-Webb, a slight zone switch. Another turnover. Clark splits two defenders, can't finish. And here comes Jalen Lowry. Lowry into the paint. He'll turn around, pop and miss. Gurley clears the boards. Furman looking to run. Bothwell the pull up three in transition, no. Don't mind that shot by Bothwell. It was in the rhythm of the transition. And left it a little short, but I think that's a shot that the Paladins will take. Media timeout at the next whistle. Holmes checked by Clark, and Clark a little too much of a reach, and it'll be his first foul, team second, and that'll get us to the media timeout. Furman up nine, 23 to 14 at the 11.33 mark here at Timmins Arena. And we'll return with more college basketball on ESPN after this. Here's what's coming up next for Southern Wesley, and they turn right around and play again tomorrow night. They go west for the rear, and they'll take on North Georgia. Coming off a close loss to Lenore Ryan, an overtime game, six points a feet. Right before that, it was a two-point win over Landers. So this 
Southern Wesleyan team, no stranger to close games, competitive coming down late. They'll be right back at it 24 hours from now. Near turnover, Trainard Farrell into the game for the first time. Here's a runner over on the far side that misses, and Hunter pushing it. Jalen Pugh in the game, finds Bothwell on the baseline, and his floater is good. Nice patience by Bothwell, sliced and diced into the lane, put it in. Hey, what I really like what I've seen out of Jalen Pugh in this early season. Confident, can knock down the jumper, explosive, and I think you'll see him earn more and more minutes on this pallet and lineup. Farrell, good pass down inside, gets it back. He'll pull the trigger top of the key. Nope, and Slauson clears it. Quick outlet up the floor to Bothwell, and he'll drive baseline. Nowhere to go, finds Pew. And now Bothwell from in front of the student section left is short. Slauson runs it down in the corner. Pew able to keep it alive. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Hunter straight away, yes. Alex Hunter knocks it down, another three-pointer for the Paladins. They're fifth here in the early going. Dan, five of nine from long range. Quick whistle up top. I thought it was interesting, the Gardner web game for the Paladins, a great road win to open the season. Furman didn't necessarily shoot the basketball that well, still was able to win. The Paladins can knock it down from long range. It's going to be a dangerous team with what they can do around the rim. But what that game showed is when defense travels, yeah. you have a chance. Exactly and they, they right. won that game on the strength of their defense, and defense created scoring opportunities even on a night that they didn't shoot well. Lowry from deep. Yes, with Bothwell in his face. Oh, that. You mentioned hand in the face, stopped an 8-0 firm and scoring run, and the, the Warriors staying within reach here, now three of five from long range. Back door cut to Bothwell. Made the nice catch, couldn't finish with the right hand. Yeah, how about that pass by Schloss? Warriors can get it back to single digits with the basket here. Ross, he'll pull up with the left hand, and nice soft basket for Clenzo Ross. And now five points, perfect two of two from the field. Averaging 15 through the first three games to go along with five boards is Clenzo Ross. Here's Pew from downtown. He can't connect, and here's Dunlap pushing it up the floor for the Warriors. Defense did a good job of getting back in transition. Down inside to Smith. Flips it up over his head. Oh, my. Got the bank. Smith knew exactly where he was throwing it up there, but a quick run has the Warrior lead. Or Furman lead at 7 on the 7-0 seven Southern Wesleyan run. Pugh misses again. A little bit surprising here in the early going. Warriors out rebounding the Paladins. Dan 9-7. Dunlap from deep, got it in front of the Furman bench, and Bob Ritchie calls a timeout. Now the Warriors give him credit, not going away. 28-24 with the 8-20 mark, and they'll turn this into a media timeout. Furman up four, and we'll be back to Timmins Arena in just a moment. Nothing run by Southern Wesleyan, and they were once down 14. They're back within four at 28-24. Dan Scott and Brian Lambert with you here at Timmins Arena. That'll get Brian or um, that'll get uh, Jordan Lyons and the rest of the starters back in the game. Yeah, 10 0 run over the last 90 seconds. And Warriors now four of six from long range. Well, we're gonna pretty good job of. Moving the basketball it was a quick 8-0 start that the Palin has jumped out to in the first minute and a half. Ten on the shot clock. Warriors trying to help defensively, and then another Palin and turnover. That's Furman's third. And in transition, and the putback is good by Hunter Davis. He's got six, and it's a two-point game. That's a 12-0 run. Slauson was able to get back and have the initial block. And Tuesday night, he turned the basketball over and then all the way down and blocked it off the backboard. Hunter misfires, and now Southern Wesleyan can tie it 
And in transition, down the floor they go, and they do. Solomon Smith, 14-0 run. You know, Smith beating the defense down the court, and I'll get this Paladin crowd behind their team. Coach Richie saying, hey, slow things down. And they've done it in the span of two minutes and 20 seconds. Burley, Slauson, Lions the extra pass to Mounts for the lead, too long. And Gurley a foul going over the back. Yeah, it was a good look there as Mounts was open in the corner. But you like the, the body language down of this Paladin team. No panic, all together walking back down the court. But hey, credit, credit the Warriors here, this 14-0 run. They've done it by making six of their last seven shots. And some of them have been tough. I mean, well, and on the, conversely, Furman has settled for jump shots and have gone cold from the perimeter. Oh, for their last five, one of the last seven haven't scored in just over three minutes. Warriors can take the lead with a basket here. Ross with the pump fake. Able to keep the pivot foot. Eight seconds to shoot it. Slauson nearly took it away. And now here comes Furman on the run. Lions from deep, too strong. Yeah, Long sure. rebound and the Warriors can run it out. Yeah, nice shot in transition right in the rhythm, but just a bit too strong. Now Furman missed their last seven from the field. So again, Southern Wesley and the chance to take the lead. But Tajay Dunlap stepped on the sideline in front of the Furman bench just as he started to make his move to the basket. With the Knight Warriors turnovers, those eight Furman points, those were all coming in the first four or five minutes of this basketball. Dan, 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 you made the point about the Paladins having some jump shots. See if they can't get one down on the block. And Gurley, Slauson can't try to muscle one up down low. Everything has been from the perimeter during this stretch, and here's a foul coming over the top. One number four fouls another. Solomon Smith picks up his first. That's team foul number four. This 14-0 Warrior run coming over the last 356 on that Paladin scoring drought down in the field. The Furman do exactly that. Try to get it down low to Gurley. Use the height for advantage. Little right-handed jump hook. Stops the bleeding. Powell's back up two at 30 to 28. Went over four minutes without a basket. See Furman staying in that half-court man-to-man defense. Nice transition D down low and forces a turnover. Nice job by Clay Mounts coming over on the block. And Mike Bothwell is able to check back in the basketball game. Schlossen to take a seat. You know what I like we're seeing right now with a Furman, though, even with the Royal run to tie things up before Furman goes back up two. No panic, all looking at each other, saying, hey, we're just fine. And you know, from the office at the viewpoint, maybe be a little more patient, work it well. Gurley trying to back in. And now a foul on the floor. I mean, the, anytime you put two hands on the offensive player, it's going to be usually the whistle call. Been one of those new rules this year. Shot clock on offensive rebounds and foul if it's under 20. Just goes back to 20, not the full 30 seconds. You like that rule? I don't have an issue with it. Yeah. Mounts baseline just forced his way to the basket and scores. Yeah, kind of a cataclysmic approach there, just violent nature, fights through the defense, lays it up and in, mean that in, in a great way, nice aggressive take. Furman with a little 4-0 run. Go back up by four and now see what they can do defensively. There's a takeaway. Gurley, Lions from downtown, it's short. Well, they have gone stone cold from the outside. Lions have made the first two from long range. Another deflection. 
you like there is Coach Ritchie always like to see active hands and the deflection. Lions hustles back down, knocks it out of bounds. Tell you what, Furman's defense has picked it up here the last three minutes. Holding the Warriors scoreless for the last three ten. Howden's led it 28 to 14. And then the Warriors responded with a 14-0 run to tie it. Furman has scored the last four. Lions throws it away. He almost got caught in the air, and the Warriors didn't give it right back. Yep. He wanted to go to the corner, I think, for Mount, and then got caught with it. It'll take us to a media timeout. 3.48 to go. A little bit of a ragged first half, but the Paladins leading it. 32-28 here at Timmins Arena. Brian and I will return. Your Wish you had a battery that lasted longer than lunch? Yeah. Order up. It's switching time. There, that's better. Switched up to 12 hours of battery life. Switch to Chromebook. After tonight, Brian Lambert and the rest of the crew will be rolling to Tuscaloosa. Furman in Alabama, then back here a week from tonight for Columbia International. Can you get into the Thanksgiving weekend with uh, Elon and UT Arlington? Yeah, big opportunity away from Tuscaloosa. I don't think Furman will be catching anybody looking past him after some big wins. But I'm really interested to see how Furman plays up at Elon. Games back-to-back -back games game simulates a little bit of a conference tournament type yep. feel. You can see how your team reacts on short notice. You can test, of course, Elon, former member of the Southern Conference. Bothwell down the paint. Gurley with the foul. Yeah, nice job, Gurley. Gurley staying with the miss. Second basket for Gurley in a 6 0 Paladin run after the Warriors have tied it at 28. 34-28 Paladins. Nice backdoor cut and the layup for Trainar and Farrell. Yeah, nice cut. Got the reverse layup, caught the Paladins sleeping in, and that's the first Warrior bucket in the last 340. And clear out for Gurley, spins and draws the foul. Solomon Smith just picked up his second. That's team number six, and Gurley, who's 0 for 2 from the line tonight, will head back there for two more. The yeah, Warriors are going to have to bring help on Noah Gurley. Anytime he's one-on-one -on -one down low, we will have that all evening long. So, yeah, we saw it early, the double team coming by Southern Wesley, and that's got to come back. These guys won't have success one-on-one -on, -one on the block. Gurley hits that one. There's a look at it. Just got him on the bottom of the hand as he released the shot. Six points now for Noah Gurley. As he drains them both. Furman back up six, 36-30, 2.45. Clock running. Well, we mentioned just two Warrior points in the last four minutes, Dan, but it hasn't been because they've been missing shots. They've made seven of their last nine, but they've turned the ball over five times in that span. Ross with the stop, can't finish. Gurley flies in to clear the boards, quick outlet. Hunter to Bothwell. Near Bob Ritchie wants more movement offensively. Down low to Gurley. Making it a point to get the ball into the big man, and he's fouled again. Well, again, the double team didn't come, and Gurley will go to the line for two more. And they say, hey, pick your poison. If you have the double team, you might leave somebody open on the perimeter. But size and athleticism for Noah Gurley. Solomon Smith at 6'6, having to try to defend the 6'8 Gurley. He just picked up his third yeah. foul. So he'll be coming out in a moment. Hunter Davis at the table to check in for him. Gurley, after missing his first two from the lines, now hit three in a row. Furman trying to push its lead back to eight if he hits this one. It's following a, a similar trend to the game last year. You mentioned it was just a 10-point game and a half a year ago. Thirty-eight thirty. Now let's see what this final two minutes holds. Another deflection. Yeah, that's something we've seen a lot here in the first half. Active hands and firm and multiple deflections. And 
Now their goal is 30 of those a game. Davis needs help. Gets it from Brady. Brady now double team, tries to step through, shot blocked from behind. Scramble for the ball on the floor and shot clock violation. Ahead of any tie up and that'll give the ball to Furman. Yeah, nice job, active defense. And tell you what, dude, I, I do like what Edwards Brady's doing off the ball. I think he was the one to have that back door cut. And he's done a nice job of trying to make this pal and his defense chase him around, but they're a nice job Furman having hands around the basket to force the shot clock violation. Foul away from the ball on Clay Mounts. His second team fifth. Mounts tied with Lions and Gurley for a team high eight points. Get Trey Clark back into the basketball game. Just the fifth pallet and turnover here in the first half. I want to correct something I did a little while ago. I gave two points to Trainard Farrell, and they actually went to Edwin yeah. Brady. Ninety seconds remain in the opening half. Dunlap in the corner dribbles to the wing. Twelve to shoot. Off balance in the paint. And Trey Clark with the rebound. Palomans again looking to push tempo. Rebounds 15 to 12, though, in favor of Southern Wesley. Look at Noah Gurley just trying to take over. And there's nobody on the Warriors right now that can defend Noah Gurley. And a nice job of the sophomore recognizing that and taking it right to the basket. And after settling for three pointer after three pointer during the stretch when the 14 point lead went away. What have they done? They've gone back down inside with a purpose. Here's Davis. And the double clutch draws the foul. Jordan Lyons with his first. Team number six and heading to the free throw line is Hunter Davis. He's got six on the evening. And Furman now 16 points in the paint. Warriors though with 14 battling down low. Forty-three seconds to go. And he got one. Well, you might see an opportunity for the Warriors to put some backcourt pressure. You may see a, a quick attempt here, try to get a two for one for Coach Bob Rich's squad. Twelve seconds difference, game clock, shot clock. Curly at the top. Back in his way down, off the glass, count it. Yeah, more of the same right there. Noah Gurley now with 12 points, and he's cued this pallet and run to push the lead back to 11. The largest has been 14. 42-31, final 10 seconds of the first half. Ross, pocket pick by Gurley, out of bounds, and it'll stay with Southern Wesleyan with one and a half seconds. I'll tell you what, it looked, thought it went right off a blue jersey. Let's see if we can't get another look. Nonetheless, the clock just at 1.5 second. Coach Ritchie liking his team's defense. And here's another look. Plus, they said Gurley was already out of bounds. Shot ahead of the buzzer. No. And that is the end of the first half. Furman on top, 42-31. Stay tuned. We've got a full halftime for you coming up. Warriors get the basketball to start the second half. Trailing by 11. What are you looking for here in the first five minutes or so? Yeah, I think what we were just talking about there in the half. Furman, who started hot from beyond the arc, maybe got a little three-point happy. And some of them were coming in rhythm of the offense, just weren't falling, it settled down, went inside to Gurley. Is Furman's offense going to try to run inside out? Are they going to try to run it through Gurley, who got the hot hand late? And if you're the Warriors, I think, look, keep playing tough. You have some shots that fell to help you get that 14 0 run, but you have to take care of the basketball. Dunlap finally bells out. Davis, eight on the shot clock, and as he steps through, a foul. Jalen Slauson. 
It's his second and team first here in the second half. Shot clock will go back to 20 and got down to seven. A little too aggressive there by Slauson. Saw some good minutes out of Solomon Smith in that first half. Smith had six points. Just 13 minutes. Ross with the drive and the dish, but Smith couldn't handle it. Warriors keep it alive at midcourt. And a deep three from Dunlap. And you think it drew iron. Volleyball. And Slauson clears it. A couple of Paladins hit the deck. Yeah, Gurley running far side. There is the double team. And then I think that's something else to watch is Southern Wesley going to immediately come with that double team to try to limit down low, or they're going to content to try to defend still one on one. There you saw coming over to help was Brady. Now what got Furman's lead back to double digits is going down low to Noah Gurley at the end of the first half is letting him operate. Mounts will try the three out of the corner. Too strong. Rebound by Brady. And still looking for our first points of the second half. Saw both teams in that first half over 50%. I think they're going to get a hold on Noah Gurley on the slip. Smith is like, come on, man. A little continuation. Second foul on Gurley. Second team foul. Oh, the Warriors have talked about it a little bit then in that first half. Their religious really job of moving without the basketball. Of course, Furman to run around and defend. I think especially Edwin Brady did a nice job. He was the one that had that backdoor cut reverse layup. Fifteen on the shot clock. Nice defense there by Hunter. Ross from downtown. No. And a long rebound. Mounts will control it. Hunter to Lions. And now they'll back out, reset the offense. Yeah, nice job there by the Warriors getting back defensively, forced the Pounders to slow down. Open look. Hunter out of the corner. And they continue to be stone cold from outside. Smith driving, fading away. Lions did a good job of misdirecting him at the basket, and it's out of bounds to Furman. And you caught it right there. A really nice job by Jordan Lyons, forcing the misdirection but not fouling. You saw his arm straight up. And oftentimes, you see too many players try to come up with the block and, and hack and foul. A nice job there. Just forces the other side of the mislay. Still looking for our first point to the second half. And there you go. On cue, Clay Mounts banks it home. Nice job there. By He's Mounts. got 10. Sorry. 20 points in the paint now for the Paladins. As you saw, Mounts not settling and going right after the glass. 44 and 31. Furman by 13. Ross splits two. Or a Dunlap, rather. And got the floater. And now eight for Dunlap. A nice job of getting into the paint. No. Has the teardrop to fall. His first two-point basket. Turnover. Dunlap at Hunter. And good defense. Ball saved in and mounts on the far side. Jalen Slauson defensively raced down to get the block. Lions with his shot blocked. Best timeouts we saw in that first half was just a minute and a half man. Pasqua who resettled his team down after falling down a quick eight points. And it's kind of been a new look warrior team after that first time. There's a three deep by Solomon Smith. He's got nine, and they're within eight at 44-36. Back to a single digit power and lead here, approaching the 16 minute mark of the second half. Furman just 5 of 17 from long range and started, believe, 4 of 6. Now spinning on the baseline and draws contact. And there you saw the double team coming. Mount spun away from it, damn And I think what we've seen is Southern Wesley is going to bring that second defender, which is going to have some kick out, some skip pass opportunities. And Furman can get warmed up from long range. May have to rethink the double. But at your point right now, it's really pick your poison. If Furman's able to get to the rim, force him to heat. 
Heat up from outside again. Foul was on Clenzo Ross. And it's called an offensive foul on Clay Mounts, and that'll be his third. Yeah, I think you're going to just see a smile from Clay Mounts there. I'm not sure there are tons of contact. Here, Coach Richie reminded Mounts no fouls with those three. Trey Clark at the table. He'll check in next whistle. Smith, Davis on the cut. Gurley just made him change the shot. Pushed him away from the basket. Lions pulling up. Left it short. And Gurley can't control the rebound out of bounds. That gets us to the first media timeout here in the second half. Furman's lead at 8, 44-36. Back to Timmons in a moment. You can get your tickets at Furman Paladins. Dot com. Yeah, I like that opportunity for Furman to play downtown right in the corner of Greenville, and then they'll kick things off against that Winthrop Eagle team who had a nice win recently at St. Mary's. Let's the Gales. Southern Wesleyan down by eight. Chance to get a little closer. Ross, reverse spin, and he traveled. And that's Trey Clark defending forces the turnovers. The Warriors now 13 turnovers. Furman's capitalized on 14 points. Well, Furman just one field goal here in the, in the second half. Shots seem to be taken in the rhythm of the offense. Some of these three-pointers by Lions and whatnot, or some you can see bang down on a normal occasion, just not falling since early in that first half, but still with an eight-point lead. Entry pass to Gurley. Spins, laying in with the left hand. And there you saw the... Kind of fake double team by Lowry. He looked to poke in there, moved away. But anytime Gurley catches it that low on the block, one on one, he's going to finish. Yeah, they just got no answer from Noah Gurley. Smith gives it up to Dunlap, another floater. Comes up short. Gurley the rebound, quick outlet to Bothwell. Bothwell forcing his way, and a foul on the floor. Yeah, three defenders going Bothell on a nice take. Lions was flaring to the near side corner. But you see a little more aggressive Bothell there goes to the lane and will be firm in possession. Jalen Lowry's second foul, team second. Here's Bothwell. He'll drive baseline, force his way to the basket. Left it short, though. Brady the rebound, pushes it into the front court for Southern Wesleyan. So Bothell standing aggressiveness, just like he did on that drive. Got all the way to the rim and did everything but finish. Rebounds. Still in favor of the Warriors, 22-18. A little bit of a surprise. Brady and a little breathing foul on Alex Hunter. That'll be number one on Hunter, team fourth here in the second half. See as you take a look at this replay. Watch after the whistle blow. Hunter doesn't argue the call. No, he got his he hand in. He looks right at the bench, raises his hand and look and says, "My fault." And that's kind of what you want to see out of a leader: is take ownership, don't hang on it. And there you're going to force a turnover. Well, that was uh, <laughs> Jalen Lowry looked at Kenneth Totten and said, "Man, that was a quick five seconds." <laughs> Get a good look there at Nick Pasqua. He is in his second year, as we mentioned. He took over for a legend at Southern Wesleyan named Charles Winfrey, who was a player, a coach there. I think the court is now named after him. Pasqua trying to rebuild this program. Two seconds, one second. Gurley doesn't get it off. Gurley didn't see the shot clock there. The first shot clock violation for the Pallies. What you saw was a little bit of a double team. Knocked it away, and that's Rand's 30 seconds seemed to run quick. About as quick as that five second yeah. count down on the other end. To go look to see if that shot clock was reset. Furman by 10, 46-36. 13.40 to go. Davis. This is Farrell out high, and now Brady. Dunlap nowhere to go. Brady will fire the three. Bricked it. Rebound. And shot clock, shot clock violation. I 
to back shot clock violations. Don't see that too often. Dan, you mentioned defense travels for whatever Gardner Webb. Not the best offensive night so far for the Paladins. Going another three plus minute run without a point for Southern Wesley. So defense staying focused even when maybe the shots aren't falling as much as you would hope. Lions into the paint. Gurley flushed it. Nice job by Jordan Lyons to give him the assist to find the line open one-handed jam. A tenth pound assist here this evening. 16 for Gurley. Farrell was open underneath but didn't have an angle to the basket. And there is a travel. Dalen Lowry shuffled the feet. Which almost made me surprised how it was and he kicked it to the corner. Take another look at that nice pass and the one-handed flush. Like, I'll tell you what, between Gurley and Slauson and Mounts, it's Paladin, you don't see him in a dunk contest, that'll be fun to watch. You know, my money would be on Clay Mounts. Oh, yeah. See what he can do. Slauson had a nice moment down at Charleston Southern, a one-handed flush. Double-team Gurley finds an open hunter. Got it. And took the lid off the basket from outside, and it went inside out. Yeah, a little bit different there. The double team coming, a timeout taken by Southern Wesley as the Paladins have pushed the lead out to 15 on the inside out three-pointer. 51-36. First time out called. We will take it with them. Paladins on top. The entire time, which is not an issue anyway. Yeah. But 25 of them are going to get Tickets to the Furman Wofford football game in Spartanburg tomorrow. Yeah, score to keep an eye on here at the Southern Conference at the half. Western Carolina, seven point lead down on Tallahassee against Florida State. I think a much improved Catamount squad up in color we will see this year. I, I think they have a chance to be a sleeper in the Southern Conference. Paladin's in the zone doing a little scrambling. No backside rebounding help. Shot was missed, and Bothwell with the board. So Coach Bob Ritchie alluded to you may see some different defenses here with a 15-point lead elected to go zone. That's something you're going to see a little bit differently in the zone. You don't have your kind of set man to box out. you got to find a body. 13 seconds. Trying to get it down low. Can't. Here's Clark. Four seconds. Off balance. Whoa! Is that Slauson? Indeed. I will scream. I heard it, but I didn't see it. Come flying from outside the paint for the two-handed flush rebound. And here's a little bit of a, a trapping zone near midcourt. Six points for Slauson. Farrell gets the, the bounce. Stops a 9-0 pallet run over the last 345. 53-38. I like these. Change up in defense at the end. Nonetheless, it shows a little bit different on tape. Slauson. Alley oop was a little too high, but he was athletic enough to get it, come down, and go back up. Give him eight. Furman by 17. Inside to Farrell. Double teamed. He's going to the basket anyway and scores. Back to back buckets for the Warriors. Lead at 15. This is when you have those different defenses and you're going to have some teaching opportunities on tape to say, hey, where should you be? What should you be doing in live game situations? Again, Furman wanting to go down low. Gurley with the left hand and the roll. Slauson right there to finish it if it didn't go in. And Furman, success in the paint is widening. Furman now 30 points down in the paint. Gurley, seven for seven from the field. 18 points, five rebounds, two assists and no turnovers in 29 minutes. Baseline, short. Clark again, a good defensive effort. And the Paladins with their largest lead at 17 can extend it here. We've still got a media timeout to get at the next dead ball. 9.43, clock running, Gurley in the paint, scored again. And now eight of eight, 20 points. And Hey, so let's talk about this defense, Coach Bob Richie's. You, know, you, you got Noah Gurley at the top and Slauson and a little bit of a traffic zone inside. You got to watch out from behind it. And how about this? Brady with a chance for a four-point play. 
foul on Slauson, flying at Edwin Brady, who nailed the three. He shoots when we come back. How about this? Furman will try to extend a streak of seven straight true road wins. It dates all the way back to a year ago at Wofford, yep. I believe. Brady trying to complete a four-point play. And he can't do it. Clay mounts with the rebound. So Furman still up 16, 59-43. Bothwell with the crossover. Dribbled into a double team. Quick pass by Clark. And Hunter, wide open, nails it. And a 14th pound assist. Nice job by Clark finding the open Hunter. And he's been the one who's been knocking him down from long range here in the second half. And Furman staying it, I think you're right, a 1-3 kind of one traffic zone. This time mounts at the top. Turnover. Bothwell, lob! Count it! Nicely executed on the alley-oop, and it all went on the turnover. Yet another point off turnover. The Palin is now with 23. Largest lead at 21. Ross to Farrell. And he scores. That's six points all in the second half for Trainar and Farrell. Hardyville, South Carolina product. Here's Bothwell. Splits the defense. Has his pass deflected. And a turnover as Ross comes up with it over on the far side. Matt Powell turnover. Nice job there by the Warriors getting a hand on the pass. This Let's see if they can capitalize, trailing by 19 here, approaching the under eight timeout here in the second half. Furman back in, it's like traditional man-to-man -man defense after experimenting with that 1-3-1. Three, one. Deep three by Solomon Smith, his second, both in this half, 64-48. Warriors now a seven. From long range, both teams at seven. Furman seven to twenty. Warriors seven to fifteen. Trey Clark wanted the foul, didn't get the call. Bob Ritchie wanted to travel when Brady went down, didn't get it. Furman has made six of their last seven field goals. Warriors three of their last three. Open look. Here. A step in foul on Brady. That'll be his first, team number three. Get another look at the alley oop slam to Slauson as we go out. Furman up 64 for, uh, 48. Five boards. In fact, he missed his first two free throws, and he's not missed a shot since. And they've been very effective down low. He's done a nice job of being patient on the block and finding the shot. And been perfect, but most of that success has come with inside four or five feet. Colin Kenny into the game for the first time for the Palomans, freshman from Michigan City, Indiana. Here's Trey Clark. Yeah, Kenny had some strong minutes the other night down in Charleston Southern. Mounts. And Clark zigged. Mounts thought he was going to zag, and that's a turnover. Credit the Warriors. Furman went out to their largest lead at 21. Southern Wesley battling, as you knew they would. In a game at this point, we talked about last year, a very similar type feel, it seems, to what we saw a year ago. Dunlap with the second chance and puts it in. He's got 10. Averages 12.3 through their first three games of the season. That's a 14-point lead. They've run off seven straight. All within two minutes. Mounts kicks it back out and a blocking foul. They got Brady. Yeah, just the fourth team foul, so no shots at either team in the bonus. Furman with five team fouls. Shot clock will go back to the bonus. We'll take another look at it coming over a little late. It's almost like bowling. The pinch is falling to the ground. We'll see if Furman tries to get it back down to Mr. Gurley looking to extend his career high on the block. Hunter triggers it in on Pine to Clark. Here they go into Gurley. Turn with the jump hook, count it, and the foul. Yeah, Gurley a cheat mode right now. He'll go to the line to try to finish the three-point play. Should take another look. 
High one-handed finish that rattles home. I'll tell you what, you don't have the size to compete with Mr. Gurley, who's not only at 6'8", but very athletic to go with that size, and he'll be a highly regarded, if not first-team player in the Southern Conference. Foul was on Solomon Smith, his fourth, by the way. Team number five, Furman's lead at 17 as we hit the six-minute mark. Turnover. Mounts, and now Kenny. Hunter swinging back around the perimeter. And there comes to the immediate double team now. Yep, Kenny's pass taken away. And Dunlap with the run out. Let's see if the Warriors try to keep that double team going. Furman committing their 11th turnover, letting the nine Warrior points. Gurley calling for a travel, so that's turnover number 12. See Boppolo opportunity back in. And Furman has made seven of their last eight, still about 50% for the game and 54%. Warriors shooting 47% from the field and 44% from long range. Furman by 15, there's a fall away by Brady. And he cuts it to 13. Yeah, Brady now with seven points. We talked about his movement in the first half. A 21 point lead at one point, now sits at 13, five to go. Good girly attacking. Just about right now, men among boys. Well, saw two blue jerseys go up for that block with the left side. 24 10 for 10. They see active hands by Gurley deflected. They're trying to kick it out to Ali Lauer. To take another look. Gurley knocks it out of bounds. We'll stay with the Warriors. And 10 on the shot clock. How about take it? They are calling a full timeout, but we're going to keep it here. It's not in that range for the media timeout. You know, people were watching this start from the Furman side and thinking, well, you, you really should be up a lot more on this team than you are 15 points with 4.37 to go. I can see that argument, but you can also see what Bob Ritchie has been doing in this game, they've been experimenting with yeah. with some things on the defensive end of the floor that they, they, by and large, have not done since he's been here. And playing some different combinations, getting some other guys some minutes. So there, there's a method to the madness from a Furman standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. As you mentioned, this is a, a tight game. We're comfortable with some experimentation. The lead was comfortable at 20. I, I like what Furman did with the 1-3-1. One, one. It's a little bit different to run it in a game against different jerseys than you do when you're done in practice. And not only does it get you a chance to, to work and have stuff on film, it also shows a future opponent's another look that you may have to yeah. prepare for or another recall. So um, I, I think that change up, and we saw a little other zone at one point, could be something Furman continues to work on before heading to Tuscaloosa, and it gives them specifically the Crimson Tide of another look. And I think on, on the offensive end, yeah, when Furman is impatient and going down low, that's that's been there. It's just been trying to get some other shots to fall tonight, and that's one of the differences in why a 15-point game versus maybe a wider margin. From a Warriors standpoint, you, you just like the way they just keep coming. They've not played with any intimidation factor at all. Yeah, it was an eight-nothing lead for Furman to start a quick timeout, and the Warriors battled. 14-point lead was erased on that 14-0 run, and here even in the second, the lead going over to 20. Still battles, and that's all you can ask for out of this SWOO team. Here's a three straight away from Bothwell. His second three-pointer from long range. Now two of four from beyond the arc to push the lead back to 18. And again, now recently in the last four or five minutes, some of these rhythm three-pointers are starting to fall. A couple from Alex Hunter, one from Bothwell. I'm shooting the ball above 56% still, just 38% from long range, 8 of 21. So not really. Two low percentages. 
The purple C parted there, and Davis drives all the way to the basket, lays it in. And At the final media timeout, Furman's lead 72-56. I uh, stand corrected on something in Tuscaloosa on Tuesday night. Your broadcast partner will be not Tom Van Hoy, but one Jordan Casker. Yeah, uh, uh, call the walking encyclopedia will be joining me. That's what you call him. I've got other names for him. <laughs> He's not paying attention. He's staring out there. Slauson, entry pass to Gurley, back outside to Hunter. That one was in and out. Lions can't finish. Yeah, two good looks there in the rhythm of the offense. Could convert, still a 15-point lead, approaching three to go. And Dan, I think it all started there on a, on a paint touch. You talked about kind of the inside-out look in the first half. There we saw the touch by Gurley earn the open three. Shot missed by Diego Poor. He was in the game for the first time for the Warriors. Lions again open. Got that one. Yeah, nice find by Slauson. Skip pass it to the far side. Furman's 18th assist on 30 made baskets. 75-57, 18-point lead. It's been as high as 21. And here's another little wrinkle in the defense here. Saw a mid-court trap there. That might have just been off a of normal man-to-man. -man. Jacob Smith from Anderson, South Carolina, in the lineup for Southern Wesley, and a foul down low on Jalen Slauson. That'll be his fourth. 17 foul, I believe, so one and one, and now you'll see an opportunity for Ben Beaker to get his first action for the Paladins. He collected a plethora of rebounds in the last two or three minutes down in Charleston Southern. Jalen Pugh and Kyle and Kenny also in. Gurley Lions and Slauson out. Comfortable eight. Actually, Slauson is still in. Hunter. Hunter's out. Yeah, again, congratulations, Noah Gurley. Career high performance. And Man, we'll finish the game without a missed field goal. Perfect, 10 of 10. Harmon is going to go to 4 and 0 on the season. The Warriors are going to go to 1 and 3, and they turn around tomorrow and play North Georgia. Kenny, an open three, air ball. Yeah, short. Credit Pew, though. Pew could have had a look to the top. One more pass far side to Kenny. Under two minutes to go. Ross with the finish. Nice move by Ross. Now seven points. And see a couple pallet and wall calls at the table. A chance to check in this last 90 seconds of the next whistle. Robert Swanson and Rhett Lister. Pew from downtown. Got it. Taylor Pew, I like this kid. Coach Rich will take a timeout to keep things moving to get the subs in. Robert Swanson and Lister, as you mentioned. Take a look at this replay. Nice pass over to Pew. Close out a little slow by Hunter Davis and the power to lead back at 19. 78-59 with 125 to go. Ross with the pull up on the baseline, no. So now if you're, you're Lister or Swanson, you've got to find yourself a look. No, well, Hughes going to shoot it. Look, Coach Ritchie said he liked what he's been doing in practice the last couple weeks, and you can see why. Pew back-to-back three-pointers from him. Ties the largest lead. Actually went up by one. Yeah. It's 22 now. We There's a about, three. Uh, you know, I said I call Hunter. Or Jordan Kasky, my walking encyclopedia is. He just let us know Gurley, just the second player in school history to go perfect for the field on 10 or more free or field goal attempts, rather 10 of 10 tonight. The other, Russ Hunt, back in 1972 versus App State, a perfect 14 of 14. See, that's why I call him the walking encyclopedia. He just has it, has it ready. So big night for Noah Gurley. Scramble, Ross comes up with it. 
Runner in the lane and an offensive foul. And look who's there taking that charge. Red Lister, the freshman out of Easley, South Carolina, has a smile and gets some high fives from that pal of the bitch. Hey, look, you can see the connectedness of this team. There's just as pump up for drawing a charge as it would if Mr. Lister got a basket. Five-second differential shot in the game clock. So Powell is looking to get a shot. Lister with the drive. Bank wasn't open. Beaker with the follow once, twice, three times. Just wanted some offensive rebounds to pad to his stats as Beaker gets in the scoring column. Paladins ending the game here on an 8-0 run. Final 10 seconds. Farrell with the three, yes. Nine points all in the second half, and that'll do it. 83-61 the final. Furman with the win and proves to 4-0 on the season. Yeah, very workmanlike effort for the Paladins. 21-point victory credit. Southern Wesleyan fought all 40 minutes and stayed with it. Furman led by as many as 14 in the first half, as many as 24 in the second before winning by this final margin. And then the, the challenge will be Tuesday night. Competition goes up as the Palace head to Tuscaloosa, but uh, a, a very methodical-like effort tonight for Coach Richie's squad. 83-61, your final score, waiting on Head coach Bob Ritchie to make his way to the table where he is 